Well, hey everybody, Backyard Scrapping here. Um, we actually finally got some nice sunshine. Um, it is still pretty cool out here, but we're going to get to part two of this refine. I am very, very sorry that it has taken me so long to get to this. Um, but for those of you who know, you know, we've been having a lot of problems with my dad and most of my time for the past four months has pretty much been spent with him. Anyhow, uh, I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, simply put, uh, my dad was more than capable of taking care of himself till a hospital made a mistake and unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that. So I'm not going to go into detail about that because I don't want to get sued. So I'm not going to say anything else about it. Uh, but we have finally made it to this refine. So what we're going to do is I've got this broken into batches. Um, most of these type of contacts I have done before. So naturally I always try to do the tungstens completely by themselves because if anything's going to give you problems it'll probably be them. I've associated the rest that I know you know are types that I have done together before. Um, this is probably going to be a batch. This will be a batch. This will be a batch on its own because I think it has a little more copper in it. Um, this is going to be a batch on its own. Naturally, the tungstens, and then I'll probably be in that. There's you know almost a kilo and a half of these. We'll probably break that into two or three batches. Back here we have his refined powder and some melt. Um, I'm actually going to drop him an email about this uh, and see exactly what he wants me to do with this because if I don't refine this, I can put it into a bar, but I can't really mark it, you know, with a with a silver content because I didn't refine it. So I'm going to talk to him about that and see what he wants to do with this. But probably what we're going to start with today is I'm going to get the tungstens done because to me they're the biggest pain, <clears throat> and we'll probably do maybe three or four more little batches before we start moving up to the bigger stuff. Uh, then we also still have our experimental stuff that we're going to mess with, which was our filaments from fuses. And we'll go through that at the end because that's going to be the, that's new stuff for me. I have not done that before. So we will actually get into those at the end of this refine. So I'm going to get the camera set up. We've got our little hot plate set up and we're going to go ahead and start dissolving this stuff off and see what we get out of it. So I'll get back at you when we've got it in the beakers and we're ready to roll. Okay guys, we got our batches done. I actually rearranged a couple of batches and even though there's some rounds and squares in there, I changed it up a little bit because these ones that had copper and there was another batch of square ones I was going to do here actually are showing that bag is showing a little more copper so I want to try and keep these copper ones a little separate I know this seems to a lot of people to be strange the way I do this but I always try to do my batches as like as possible the reason behind that is, is a lot of times these tungstens will throw off some lead and if you go way back in my videos, you'll see where we had just a small amount of tungstens dump a bunch of lead into the batch. So from that point on, I actually started doing everything in light batches. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but these are showing a little bit more green on them uh, just from the air or being exposed. Plus, they're also showing some raw copper. Uh, the green is naturally indication of copper. So I decided to put those together and kind of switch them up a little bit. But I do have the bags marked and the weights and the batch numbers on them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by in each one of these, the total weight of grams, I'm going to add a milliliter of water to that. Uh, if all goes well, we can get away with about a milliliter and a half of nitric per gram to dissolve this. We may have to use a little more or a little less, but I'm going to be doing a lot of rinsing while this is going on. So that's why I'm going to uh, actually you use about a 35% dilute nitric acid to dissolve this. Um, it's going to give off a lot of gas. Uh, you're going to have want to have it out in the open, have a back fan going. You do not want to breathe 
any of that Knox gas. No matter what anybody says, that is some bad, bad, bad stuff. So I just wanted to show you how we're going to have it set up. Uh, I'm going to get my tops for these. We're going to go ahead and add our water to them, uh, distilled water, you know, matching the number of grams, which will leave us room to add more water, which allows more of the silver to go into solution. Um, and then we're going to slowly add nitric acid to each one of these. So, like I said, hopefully we can get away with about a milliliter and a half per gram. Uh, sometimes it takes two, sometimes it takes more. You just never know. You don't know... I, that's why I always say in my videos, you don't know what's going to happen or what you're going to get until you do it. So I'm going to get these set up, get some nitric acid measured out, and uh, we're going to get rolling on this. So I will be back at you in a bit. Okay, guys, we have our water added. Um, I've turned the hot plate on. We're going to warm it up a little bit. Um, it is sitting in the sun, so we're going to draw some heat from that. I'm just going to put it on low because it is still kind of cool out here. Uh, when that comes to temperature, I'm going to start adding the nitric acid. Uh, I actually have four beakers set out. I'm going to measure for each one approximately what I think it's going to take for each jar or for each beaker. Um, I wish I had more of those plastic beakers, but I don't because I love how they pour acid. I hate how the nitric acid bottles pour out. But I'm going to go ahead and get my nitric acid measured out for each beaker. And then when these warm up, we're going to start slowly adding our nitric acid to each one of those. So I will get back at you when we get this measured out. And we'll see what we end up with here and get it rolling. I also have to get my fan set up because, like I said, I don't want any of this Knox gas coming back at me. So we'll be back at you in just a second. Okay everybody we're ready to go. As you can see over on the other counter there I have our nitric acid measured out. Uh, I'm gonna set up the fan and uh, we're gonna get it going. I wish I had one more plastic beaker because I hate these for pouring nitric acid, I love using these plastic beakers because they do not drip. Um, that glass one, I had no choice. I didn't have another one. We're actually going to get over here, get set back up on this. Sorry for the squeak. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get the fan set up and start pouring our acids in. So, here we go. Okay, we are going to start with the furthest away, which is going to be the tungsten. And this stuff will burn the fire out of you, so be very, very, very careful with it. We're just going to add a little bit at a time. Because naturally this one is full, it did drip just because I said I didn't want it to. And you can see we're getting an immediate reaction. I actually have to get that wiped off just to make a liar out of me, right? We're going to add a little bit of acid to one and two. I know this one's probably going to rip because it's a glass beaker, but we're going to go ahead and hopefully not. A little bit in there and it did drip like glass usually does we're going to go to three four and five get a little bit going in here going to move to six and get a little bit going in there. So these should be pretty close to the correct amount of acids we're going to need for each of these. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let them work for a bit. And uh, just see what happens. So I'm going to let them heat up 
let them work and periodically I will pop in and uh, let you guys see what's going on so we'll be back at you guys in just a bit okay everybody we are about 10 minutes in right now um, our reactions are slowing a little bit as you can see we have several different shades of blue green in each beaker which tells me there's a little bit different in each one which is again why I like to do it this way I'd rather take the extra time and do it like this than to have one small batch foul the entire batch also it's easier to handle in smaller batches uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more nitric to each of these and we're gonna let them go we're getting some knocks in this one and this one and in that one this one still seems the tungsten still seems pretty clear but we're gonna go ahead and do that add a bit more acid to each one of these do this very slowly especially if it's warm because you're gonna get instant reactions and you don't want to boil over by the way when I approach this because I don't have a mask on I am holding my breath basically just going to continue doing this until these guys are dissolved see we're getting a lot more Knox gas right now so I'm just gonna stay away from this stuff and let it do its thing and we'll be back at you guys probably we'll wait about an hour see where we're at and then we'll be back at you okay guys about another 15 minutes has gone by and what I actually have done is I've moved the camera back behind the back fan and I'm way back away from it about 10 feet or so um, I've just added a little bit more nitric acid. You can see we're getting a lot more Knox gas in those first three beakers right now. The tungstens are always kind of like that, the way they are, not as much because there's a lot more tungsten weight there than there is silver, and that's not going to dissolve. Um, the camera was actually getting in my way when I was doing that, and uh, nitric acid is not something to play with, so... I decided to just move everything back and uh, we'll do shots on it from here but uh, I'll be back at you in just a bit okay everybody it has actually been a couple hours I mean you can see the Sun has actually moved away now it is getting very cold under here very fast um, there's really no point until we get to the filtering process to keep just you know coming in and showing you over and over the same stuff so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let this stuff work out um, when everything is dissolved we'll come back in uh, and we'll do the filtering and then we're gonna test each individual batch with a little piece of copper make sure we're not gonna throw any lead and uh, then we're gonna get these filtered off and drop them 
So, I will, like I said, get back with you when we are ready to start filtering. No point again in just keeping being redundant and showing you, you know, I've just added acid, I've just added acid. So, that's all that's going to happen probably for the next several hours. So, we will get back to you in a bit. Hey guys, I know I said I wasn't going to pop in again until we were uh, ready to filter this stuff, but the sun is going down, and I just wanted to show you, right here I think is the best angle, again, why I do things the way I do them. We have four beakers and four distinct different color fluids. So I just wanted to back that up one more time and say, I mean, there, our tungstens are on the far left, which you can see that fluid is nearly black. We have a nice light blue color, then an aqua color, and then a darker green color. So that I just wanted to bring this up to show you why I do things separately. Had I done those batches together, I have a feeling those are throwing some lead the tungstens. Had I done it all together that would have contaminated these other batches. So just quickly I wanted to show you that. Uh, I'm probably going to go in for the evening now and let these go overnight. So hopefully we're not going to get any snow or anything and I can be back out here in the morning. So we will talk to you guys in the morning. <laughs> 